please stand as you're able for the lighting of the Advent wreath. May your hearts be filled with God's love towards all people as you consider the life of sacrifice and encouragement of John the Baptist. Thanks be to God. Last Sunday, we lit the candles of hope and peace. Today is the third Sunday of Advent, and we light the candle of love and remember John the Baptist. Matthew chapter 3. In those days, John the Baptist came, preaching in the desert of Judea, and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. This is he who was spoken of through the prophet Isaiah, a voice of one calling in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight paths for him. Blessed are you, sovereign Lord, just and true. To you be praise and glory forever. Your prophet John the Baptist was witness to the truth as a burning and shining light. May we, your servants, rejoice in his light, and so be led to witness to him who is the Lord of our coming kingdom. Jesus, our Savior and King of Ages, blessed be God forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray together. Lord Jesus, light of the world, John told the people to prepare, for you were very near. As Christmas grows closer day by day, help us to be ready to welcome you now. Amen. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, 
now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together the call of the day. Stir up your power, O Lord, and with great might come among us. And because we are sorely hindered by our sins, let your bountiful grace and mercy speedily help and deliver us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. A reading from the book of Isaiah. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad, the desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly with rejoice and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For water shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert, the burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. The haunt of jackals shall become a swamp, the grass shall become reeds and rushes. A highway shall be there, and that shall be called the holy way. The unclean shall not travel on it, but it shall be for God's people. No traveler, not even fools, shall go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come up on it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there, and the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow, and sighing shall flee away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed this morning, Psalm 146, verses 4 through 9, is found in your order of worship. We will recite the psalm in unison. Happy are they who have the God of Jacob for their help, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the seas and all that is in them, who keeps his promise forever who gives justice to those who are oppressed and food to those who hunger. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord cares for the stranger. He sustains the orphan and widow, but frustrates the way of the wicked. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, throughout all generations. Alleluia. A reading from James' letter to the Twelve Tribes. 
Be patient, therefore, beloved, until the coming of the Lord. The farmer waits for the precious crop from the earth, being patient with it until it receives the early and late rains. You also must be patient. Strengthen your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is near. Beloved, do not grumble against one another, so that you may not be judged. See, the judge is standing at the doors. As an example of suffering and patience, beloved, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Messiah was doing, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, Are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. As they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to look at? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? Someone dressed in soft robes? Look, those who wear soft robes are in royal palaces. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. Truly, I tell you, among those born of women, no one has arisen greater than John the Baptist. And yet, the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. Please be seated. Thank you. 
planning. Planning is an interesting thing. There was a time years ago when we used to say that a bad plan is better than no plan because at least with the bad plan you have some place to start from. Without a plan at all, the only place you can go is into, is into terror and into doing things simply because that's a reaction. Back in my Navy days, we used to plan for contingencies because there is no such thing as perfect information. We felt that it was best to find the scope of outcomes and to focus on the most likely thing that might happen in the world out there. But we also were reminded time and again that we, need, we should not forget the worst thing that could happen. Because the worst thing that could happen is always a possibility, even if it's ever so slight. And so we did time, we spent time planning and preparing for all sorts of contingencies and all sorts of things that might happen. In our church year, we are in the, in the middle, actually now starting the downward um, tail end of Advent. Advent is a time for planning or for preparing for Christ's coming. The Christian is invited to use Advent to reflect on where they are or where we are and to find hope for the journey that lies ahead in the coming of Christ our Savior. Our first weeks have been summarized or focused on the function of John to prepare for the coming of the Messiah, to take a hard look at, the li at one's life, and then to do something to correct the deficiencies which they have in their lives, and to set aside those things which prevent us from seeing the truth, Jesus and the marks of Jesus present in our current everyday life. And today we begin the transition to the hope which is found in Jesus, to being restored, to being healed of those things, of our infirmities, of those things which trouble us, and to be reconnected with God and community. We are invited as we begin this third Sunday of Advent and the transition into Christmas to remember that we are called to live faithfully, connected to the promise that is found only in Christ. But what happens when we find where we are or where we're going is at odds with what we expect? What do we do then? What do we do in our world when we find unjust peoples and actions thriving or appearing to thrive? What happens when things don't go exactly like we plan? Well, this is, in fact, a story which is related in the gospel today. John the Baptist, whom we know is now in prison, has heard his words or had his words turned on him just a little bit. John has been faithful to his calling. He has been a prophet sent to prepare the way for the coming Messiah. And he knows what the Messiah is like. He knows, and that's why he is being God's messenger. The Messiah is coming to save the world from the oppressor which is out there, getting in the way of living life as true, faithful believers in God the Creator. John the Baptist is sent to come, is sent and says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is drawn near. And there is, in fact, one greater than I who is coming after me. And yet we know from this side of eternity, and yet it doesn't specifically look that way to John or 2,000 years later to us. John is in prison. John is in a place where he never expected to be I hope, but it wasn't a surprise to him as a prophet. And being human, he had concerns about Jesus. 
Are you, in fact, the one who has come who will save us from our Roman oppressors? Are you the one who is the Messiah, or do we need to look for another? John has been ordained, and he believes what he has been given and what he sees in the world. And yet he is a leader of others who is responsible for the education of others. And he wants those others, his disciples and those around him, to have the same assurance about their work and God's promises. Because we remember John is intrinsically and intimately related to Jesus. He kicked his mother when Jesus walked into the room in the, room in the womb. John knows Jesus without even having to think about it. So John reaches out to Jesus and asking is if he is the one. And John, Jesus tells John's disciples, well, what did you see? Did you see the things that were promised? Did you see people being healed and people being restored and good news preached to the, to the people? Trust what you know as the way that God is going to work in the world. What, do you have some sort of disconnection between what you expect and what you see? Maybe you need to rethink what you expect. And so Jesus sends John's disciples away, and they, of course, or I assume they tell them, well, yes, we in fact found the Messiah, that is Jesus. But Jesus doesn't leave this moment for nothing. He asked the people, well, what did you expect when you came out to see John? What did you expect when you came out here? What do you expect the Messiah to look like? And that is part of the question that we are asked still today. What do we expect the Messiah, the one who has come to set the world free from the sins that it has, and bring us into that new place of hope. As we prepare for the future, we might be good to ask us, what do we expect the Messiah to look like? Or even better, what are we looking for? Advent is a time to consider how we get from where we are to God's desired end, to the restoration of all creation. We are reminded time and again that we are traveling a path which gives hope because we are not the first people to travel down this path. John the Baptist lived in a time where the Romans were oppressing the Jews and he was thrown in jail for doing nothing wrong except calling, pa calling power to account. We are invited as we continue our Advent journey to take account of what we find in society. We need to be reminded that God lived at the in intersection of his steadfast faith and a flawed society. John wondered, and I bet we do too, how society can continue to operate in an unjust manner. How can we, in fact, believe that God is around if the world continues to operate unjustly? And part of the reason that we know that the world operates the way it does is because there are, in fact, quite simplistically, some people who don't believe that God exists. They expect something different than was promised to them in the faith that they were given as children, if they were given faith as children. They, in fact, have given up hope because what they believe should happen is at odds with what God promised will happen, at least in their minds. We can count on those promises, and that's where we come into the story. We have been told, just like John, we, there are miracles that happen in this world. And we can be like John if we remember that it is not unfaithful to ask for assistance and clarification, 
to look for new information and new ways to find God's presence in the world, to trust that the miraculous things are at work around us. But what if those miracles don't happen the way that we expect them or in ways that we don't recognize? Well, maybe it's because we are not in tune with where God is calling us to be, and that is part of the Advent journey. Our Advent journey is a time where we are given a chance to restore a hope that that God's promises are true. And we know that's the case because we are, in fact, still worshiping in a place where we make a difference in people's lives. People come to us, people ask us for assistance, people reach out to us in ways which we can only imagine. We are on, in a journey where we are refreshed by God's story of grace in community, a place where questions are welcome and certainty is found in God's gifts to those who persevere. Our Advent journey is the time to ask ourselves, what are we looking for? And so I ask you this morning, what are we looking for? I believe that we are looking for something to count on for eternity, although eternity for us is hard to comprehend. I believe that we are looking for security in those things that are not of this world, because we know that the earthly things will pass away or change. I believe that we are looking for our place in the story which has been prepared for us by God. We are looking for a meaningful relationship with God in community and a way that we can share share it with others so that others can have that same meaning in this demanding and demeaning society and a society that rewards those who believe it's me first. John proclaimed Jesus as Messiah and we continue to this day to proclaim Jesus as Messiah, not one who will come and rule with an iron fist, but one who will invite people to be themselves, to ask questions, to plan, to make mistakes, and to continue moving forward because God calls us to move forward today and forever. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you are able, and turning to page six, let us recite the Nicene Creed, our ancient confession of faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, 
and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people. Jesus said that signs of God's dominion were to be seen in the healing of the sick, the raising of the dead to new life, and the preaching of good news to the poor. Let us pray that our lives may be the instruments of God's work in the world, saying, O God, most worthy of praise, hear our prayer. We thank you, God, for the gift of creation. Grant that we who bear your image may be faithful stewards of your gift and administer its bounty with wisdom for the good of all your creatures. O oh God, most worthy of praise, hear our prayer. We thank you that you have called us to be your people. Give us patience as we await your coming and grant us wisdom to discern your will in our daily lives, that each of us may serve others for the building up of our common life. O oh God, most worthy of praise, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We thank you for the community of faith throughout the world. Strengthen your church as it witnesses to your love. Guide us in the fulfillment of your mission that all may be one. O oh God, most worthy of praise, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We thank you for the privilege of ministering to others. We remember before you all who are sick or in need, especially those on our prayer list. We pray for those who have died. Grant us the grace to accept suffering with patience and to be strengthened by our common life in the body of Christ. O oh God, most worthy of praise, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. We thank you for those who stand for peace and unity in places of conflict. We remember those in Ukraine and Russia who are afflicted by discord and aggression. Be with nations and peoples in conflict at war and a discord, and lead us all to a peaceful resolution to animosity and aggression in your time. O oh God, most worthy of praise. Hear our prayers. We thank you for your countless gifts. We praise you for our parish family, past, present, and future. Above all, we thank you for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for our unity in him through baptism. O oh God, most worthy of praise. Hear our prayer. I invite your prayers and intercessions, either silently or aloud. We offer our thanksgiving and prayers to you, the one God and the source of light and life, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. 
Please stand as you are able. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also and with, you. with you. Greet one another in the peace of Christ. Ascribe to the Lord the honor of his name for an offering and come into his court.
thanks to you, our God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. <coughs> After supper he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink ye all of this. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with St. John and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia, the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
post-communion prayer is found on page 11 in your order of worship. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. May the sun of righteousness shine upon you and scatter the darkness from before your path. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for some announcements. Our closing hymn is hymn number 54.